the treatment of subclavius, I like to work with this muscle because it has the ability to roll the clavicle inferiorly and anteriorly, but it also has the ability to, to bring the first rib up into the clavicle, decreasing that, that, that space between the first rib and the clavicle, which can cause compression on brachial plexus um, and causing neurological signs and symptoms for our patients. It also sits in the same fascial sheath as that uh, costoclavicular ligamentous tissue that we've treated previously. Uh, that all sits in the same fascial tissue and is connected with anterior and posterior sternoclavicular capsule and ligamentous tissues. Um, so working with subclavius is really important in treating shoulder injuries because it has the ability to improve functionality in the distal glenohumeral joint um, and, uh, and improving the quality of life of our patient when, when it's, it's functioning more efficiently and when it's been treated effectively. Now, there are a number of different ways to treat subclavius, uh, but the way that I find that is most energy efficient for me, uh, for my posture, my biomechanics, and allows me to have eye-to-eye -eye contact with the patient is to be on this side of the table, working on the same side shoulder. What I like to do is have the arm across the abdomen, and then I like to roll the patient so that their scapula is leaning against my knee. Now, we like to slacken the tissue so we turn our patient's head towards us. So this is our, in this position, it's taken the clavicle away from the first rib. I've increased space already. I'm already causing a bit of a stretch and a lengthening of that subclavius tissue. I've taken the shoulder into a position where if they've had any previous dis dislocations, it's not in a, a risk of harm position. And if I need to make eye contact and communicate with the patient, then I've got, I've got full contact with them. So working with subclavius, we really want to get a sense of where the clavicle is. So really take your time, palpate from medial to lateral aspect, find the clavicle, find the first rib, and as you sink into, your thumbs sink into the sulcus, you come into contact with that subclavius musculature. Now, if they're suffering from a chronic injury or chronic condition and, or this, this structure hasn't been treated before, it's going to be quite tender. So you really need to respect that reciprocal tension of the tissue, work with the tissue barrier, work within your patient's comfortability tolerances also. So again, this is a great position for me to be in because my posture and biomechanics are, are great. We don't want to have our thumbs, you know, in a position where they're hyperextended. We want to bridge them together so that all of your directness and your force goes right into that tissue. We want to be very specific, very precise with being in contact with this tissue. So working with the subclavius, we want to just do a little load into the tissue back and forth just to assess to see what that reciprocal tension is like, what the elasticity is like with this tissue. Does it feel like it's got more of a densification or a lack of hydration medially or more laterally? With her, I get quite a bit of elasticity on the distal end or the, sort of the lateral end. But as I work a little bit more close to the proximal end, it becomes a little bit more, I can see that it becomes a little bit more sensitive and I can feel that the tissues have a little bit less elasticity through them. So with both thumbs, I load into that area where there's a decrease in elasticity and I load directly down into the table with the influence of separating first rib and clavicle from one another right through that subclavius. I'm matching the reciprocal tension of the tissue. I'm not loading through the barrier. I'm not trying to force it to release. And I'm going to wait for a softening to occur in through that densification of that tissue.
if this hasn't been treated before, it can take a few minutes. So it's really important that you as a therapist are comfortable in this position. You really want to make sure that your thumbs are bridged together as you load through the tissue. Now we've got a lot more elasticity. I've just felt the barrier change. It's allowed me to have a little bit more depth into this tissue. I'm going to come out and reassess it. Definitely a lot more elasticity into this tissue now medially, whereas beforehand it was quite restrictive. There is a second part to this technique. If you have a patient that has a lots of elasticity through the supraclavicular portion of their, of their neck, then this is a great technique that you can utilize. If you have a patient where their scalenes and their platysma are very tight from their injury, then this is not the right time and place for this second portion of the technique. If you can, take your index fingers on the superior portion of the clavicle and your thumbs on the inferior portion of the clavicle. If you can get a little wiggle back and forth of that subclavius musculature, then you can really increase hydration and decrease the compressive forces of that structure So we're just working with the, again, the investing fascial tissues of the cervical spine as they make contact with this subclavius musculature. And we're just getting a little bit more elasticity and functionality back into this tissue. Finishing that, I will reassess the space between clavicle and first rib. There's definitely a lot more space. There's a lot more elasticity a lot more heat, there's less densification to that tissue between the clavicle and the first rib, and uh, that completes the treatment for subclavius. So we would then take our patient back into their start position.